Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this update we're going to take a look at what's new in Adobe InDesign CC 2014. Well, one of the first things you'll notice is that when you launch the application, if you had a previous version installed like CC or, to, or uh, CS6, it will now do a seamless update. That's right, as you can just see, it brought over my previous presets and settings from InDesign CC, so that way I can get started right away with everything the way, just the way I left it in the previous version. So that's the first new thing. The next thing we'll take a look at in InDesign CC 2014 is enhanced support for tables. So we're in the souvenir booklet. I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and jump to the next page, which is page two. And then we're gonna jump over to page three, which has a table on it. Now, this is a nicely designed table with photographs in the first column. Then we've got a little bit of description about where the band's gonna be, and then the actual band name, and then a little description. What if you decided you wanted the band name to be the second column? Well, in the past, in InDesign, that would mean a lot of cut, copy, and paste work. Well, now it's just as, easily, just as easy as selecting that column and literally pick it up and drag it over. That's right, you can rearrange not only your columns, but also your rows, just by simply picking them up and moving them in the order you want them in. It may seem like a little thing, it's long overdue, but I'm glad it's here for people that work with tables. While we're at it, Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, swatches panel and you'll notice something new in the swatches panel. People work with a lot of colors in InDesign and Illustrator. Well now in InDesign we have the ability to group or create color groups. That way you can organize your colors based on subject matter, the pages you're working on, the logos, the clients, whatever it is you want and you can then create new colors and add them in. So for example if I create a new swatch I can go ahead and edit that swatch. I can do whatever I want with it, make it whatever color I want. And then once I create a new uh, swatch with the name I want, I can just simply drag it into the color group that I want it to be in. So now it's in the wild leaves color group and it's organized the way I want. The last thing we'll take a look at, and this is the one I'm probably most excited about because this is a big thing. InDesign has had support for EPUB layouts or EPUB export since version CS4. However, EPUB and the very nature of the format has always been great for text intensive documents that reflow based on the size of the display, whether it's a smartphone, tablet, or full 30 inch cinema display. But it was horrible when you had a nice layout like this. Your layout would just completely fall apart because EPUB was never designed as a format to support layouts that were graphically intense like this or just nicely designed. So if we go through this, we can see that we've got, uh, as we saw the tables here, if we keep going, we've got uh, a video right here that we want to play and we've just got all kinds of cool things in this layout that we want to happen and look just like this in the EPUB version. We got links for their Twitter account, Facebook, so forth and so on. So now when you go up to your file menu and you do an export uh, from InDesign, you have a choice. You have a choice of EPUB reflowable, which is the old way we always did it, meaning the text would reflow if the person's screen was smaller or bigger, or now fixed layout. So when I do an EPUB fixed layout, I have the ability to go in and do all the kinds of things. So for example, if I want a multi-level uh, table of contents. If I want to go in and, um, for example, for the metadata, if I want to put in a subject such as souvenir book, so it can converts over um, souvenir book. There we go, I hope I spelled that correctly. So it converts over and basically it will give me the EPUB that I want. So just to prove it, I've got the EPUB already open up in iBooks running on my uh, MacBook here. And if I go ahead and just double click on that, we not only get exact the exact layout with the cover, by the way, that InDesign exported, but we get the exact layout complete with edge animations. So if you have a device that supports EPUB 3.0 or higher, like an iPad or any of the newer ebook readers, you should be good to go. Complete with sound. So that is sound playing from an MP3 file that was placed inside InDesign. And of course we can listen to interviews and artists. We can also play the video. When you're making something which is total fun for you. So that's the video playing. And then of course we can just keep going. So we have uh, clickable links, 
clickable links for the Twitter account, Facebook account, even for the QR code. Uh, since this won't be scanned, it's actually already on an electronic device, we can make that a hyperlink as well. So there you have it. Those are the new hot things inside InDesign CC. Most importantly, for those of you who do any kind of ebook work, uh, having the ability now to do a fixed layout. This is making me want to write a new book now because I know the book will look exactly the way I designed it. So that's it for this update. We'll catch you on the next one. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching. Bye.